What's going on everybody? I'm Gunner here. Uh, today's video, uh, I want to show you guys how to tie my imposter. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie it without the dubbing brushes. And we're going to use basically two techniques. Uh, and actually it's kind of the same technique, but it's just stacking. We're going to stack in the round, and then we're going to kind of stack high tie, low tie. Uh, and with those two techniques, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. And we're, we'll kind of walk through that as the tutorials go on and showcase some different flies. Uh, but the reason why I want to start with the imposter is because when I originally introduced this fly, I did it with dubbing brushes. Now I have a reason for that. Now maybe I can just dis discuss it at the end, but you don't need brushes to tie the fly. And basically what I was trying to achieve is these synthetic flash tails with this kind of opaque sculpted head. Nice clean silhouette, ton of action in the rear. So this is a, a style of fly that I've tied for years. Um, if, you've, if you've followed me for a while and you've seen the progressions from the imposter to the all spark to the glide fly, uh, this is not something new. This is something that I've, I've done for many years with a lot of success. It's something I've tied commercially for fly shops for musky fishing with great success. Northern Pike, Trophy Smallmouth. I sent this down to Brazil uh, with Michael Williams, the owner of Nomadic Waters, who then tore it up with peacock bass, which led to the whole glide fly, which tore it up with peacock bass. So this style of fly is something that's not very new, um, and it's unbelievably successful, which is why I want to share how to do it without the dubbing brushes. So what you're going to need, basically a material dam, uh, a material for a material dam, which we're going to use SF fiber. Uh, this is also going to be your top wing and your bottom wing to build the structure uh, for your silhouette. Then you need a nice long, in my opinion, I really like round, so non-crinkled synthetic. And we're going to come in with big fly fiber straight. And my favorite thing about this is it toes that line between stiffness and, limp and limpness where it generates and holds the silhouette, but at that length it has amazing movement. Right? You don't want something super limp that it gets caught in the hydraulics of the the water push core and then it kind of distorts the silhouette and it follows a lot and you don't want something super crinkly because it's going to become too air resistant uh, and it's also going to have more resistance in the water and you won't get a full profile turn at least not as easily uh, flashes just going to keep the flash very simple we're going to do polar flashes this is gold this is copper uh, to build out kind of the core of our flash where the dubbing brushes would be and then we're going to come in with big fly or not big fly uh, flash boo magnum for the for the tail flash the the actual flash tail um the mag flash being twice as thick uh twice as wide it catches a lot of water because it's a kind of a big sail to it um, but it's also extremely durable and it doesn't fall because it's stiffer so it's a fantastic probably my favorite tailing flash to use at that length and then the head it's just going to be, you probably guessed it, Strong Fuzz, which has in recent years been my favorite head material ever. And we're going to blend that with wing and flash for tone and complexity. And then we're going to come in, I think, five, five sixteenths inch eye on that Strong Fuzz. So that's everything you need to know material wise. You can find it all on my web shop. Let's dive in and run through the, what are we tying? <laughs> the imposter. Let's do it. So the goal uh, with this color combo, we're gonna kind of do something very suckery, kind of like a red horse. At least that's my intentions. I'm coming in with Vivas. This happens to be 0.2 millimeters, which is 8 thousandths of an inch monofilament. I'm trying it out in black. This uh, 0.2 millimeter mono has become my favorite tying thread basically in the past half a year or so, maybe even a little less. It's fantastic. I can make such a rough surface lock it in it's got a nice stretch the round thread has a ton of bite to it and i have yet to break it in a tying scenario which is very very rare for me <laughs> i've literally i think i've done the whole fly and i've not once mentioned what hook we're doing <clears throat> so this is the the arex this is the pr320 so it's the predator stinger series this is the six out uh, I like the six out for tying the full size, about an eight inch fly, maybe a little bit longer with the flash tail, but a nice full sized eight inch bait fish imitation. So that's the, the PR 320 in the six out. You can downsize the fly with the same material set, just change your densities um, to the four out. The other hook option that I really like is the TP610 and the six out and the four out. And basically that's gonna run a little bit thinner wire, much wider gap. So the difference between the two for the most part 
this hook, smaller gap, so it's not going to keel as efficiently, but you can always add a little bit of keel weight to that bend with wire. If you tie it right with a nice thick uh, stabilizer wing on top and everything symmetrical, it'll ride true no problem for you. Um, <clears throat> but what this hook does really well is increase penetration because your hook point is pointed right at your hook eye. And when you go and you set that hook and you pull down, let me show you a proper example here. Uh, set the hook on a fish with this. You can see how when you pull, all that leverage, because all the pressure is going to be on that point, the hook eye went straight down, the hook point literally leveled out, and 100% of that force then is transferred into the hook point, being straight driven straight into the fish. You don't have any X, Y variables, right? You're not getting split up and down. When you tie on an Aberdeen, <clears throat> anyway, when you tie on an Aberdeen and you do that same thing, an Aberdeen is a perfect round bend, so the hook point comes out straight and you pull down. It's now pointed down at the same plane as that hook shank. And so you have X, Y variables going in. You don't have 100% of your pressure going into the penetration, which is why stinger hooks are legit for getting that best hook set. But they're not as sticky because they're not as wide gapped because the hook point is tucked up. All right, so that's your compromise, uh, kind of stickiness uh, versus penetration. So I like the PR320 for penetration, especially musky fishing. So that's why that's the hook choice. So, sorry that was long-winded, but I'm at the end of the fly here and realized I didn't mention that. I'll throw that up towards the front, and now you guys got to catch up to me and get to this point in the video. So I'm going to come in with orange for the cork. If you look at a lot of red horse, they got orange fins. So we're going to build out the core of this fly with orange SF fiber. This has a nice amount of stiffness to it, a little bit of flash blended into it. The crinkle is going to help make volume, which we're going to drape the big fly fiber straight over. Now I'm going to cut this in my lap kind of into thirds. I don't want it to be super short, but not super long. I'm going to finger taper it so the ends are not perfectly even. If you just come in and hit that with a comb, it'll make it easier to work with. You can see that's not a lot. It's actually pretty sparse. And all we're going to do is stack it. That's the technique, just stacking and packing. Come up with a loose thread, and what I'm going to do is spin counterclockwise so it falls against my fingers. Nice and accurate like that. Just put, I don't know, two and a half, three turns on. And then I manipulate the fiber before locking it down so it's nice and even. Then reef on it. All I'm going to do is walk back a little thread base here. Bring that back under tension. You see I never let go of the bob in there. It's under tension for maximum durability. And we're going to make a nice little bump that we can push the big fly fiber against to get the initial flare. And then that <clears throat> SF will stop it from collapsing and it'll force it out, which the big fly fiber is then stiff enough to carry that silhouette backwards. Now for all these steps with that mono thread and these synthetic materials, you're going to see me come in with Super glue. This is CA plus and a little reusable tube there. Not reusable. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and a little uh, applicator tube. And that basically plastic welds all these synthetics together. Now for big fly fiber, I'm going to blend these. We're going to get kind of a salt and pepper vibe. We're going to do dark brown with gold. Very sucker, right? So give me a sec here while I blend these up. But basically, we're going to use them at full length. Taper them and drape them. Now I'm going to blend these. 50-50 in part, so 50% bound, 50% gold. Uh, I'm going to blend twice as much as I need because we're going to do two stacks. So I'm going to blend them both at the same time so that we have, uh, so I don't have to do this again later in the video. And blending fibers, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I tend to do the messy version, which is rip stacking. And you guys can find a way that works best for you, but basically I just pinch everything together, pull it out by the tips, and then restack it into my bundle there. And there's no right or wrong here. I might come in and just mix it up around the core if I find it's not being manipulated fast enough. And then you take that comb, start at the tips, start at the tips. If you come up right in the middle and you have anything that's trapped, you're basically gonna seat a knot and make a big mess for yourself. So comb out the tips first, then the middle. And then come up and separate that into two piles. If you have it not perfectly blended, kind of lighter and darker, use the lighter bunch for the tail. 
So that's our big fly fiber wing. Now that straight material is pretty long. I'm going to make a nice 8 inch fly here. And if you look at where I'm going to tie that in, it's going to be slightly tapered. So we're going to have, I don't know, 70%, 30, maybe 60, 40 to our, our tapered wings here. And all I'm going to do is hit my thread on top of that. Two turns. My fingernail goes right on top of my thread. And then I pinch it. Again, it's the same technique, stacking and packing, that we used with the SF. And we have a perfect distribution of big fly fiber. Come back, walk it back. I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to come in here on my hook eye and use a packer tool. I let go of my thread there and control that so that I can make sure it's all nice and even. I don't want a super high density area. And then I'm going to tie bullet style. So I'll just tie right back on top of it. And that's like durability to the max, tied in twice, over top of itself with tapered tips with the perfect stiffness ratio to carry all that bulk rearward. It's super sick, very light, very low wind resistance. <clears throat> For our tail flash, uh, sorry, I'm going to use polar flash twice in this fly, both times to veil the big fly fiber. On the tail, I'm going to use gold. Up at the head, I like my heads darker, I'm going to use the copper. So just come in with the gold for this one. I like it fairly heavy, probably 15 strands or so. And I'm going to taper this out. Now the thing about Polar Flash is it's a woven material, so it's literally uh, flash boost strands, kind of little strands of tinsel, that are then woven uh, with a nylon. and that kind of nylon weave has a lot of pros and cons to it. The reason why I like it is because that nylon weave kind of crimps and, and distorts the flash so that the flash is not flat. As you can see, it has a lot of kind of angles to it. And that was just stacked and packed like everything else. Uh, and what happens is it can kind of catch on Esoc's teeth. You just come in with a little finger dubbing brush here and you just help to tease out some of that nylon and you can hear this you can hear this getting stuck in there and you just kind of break out the nylon and what you end up with is a flash material that then is not straight but it has all these kind of crinkles and waves it kind of uh, makes it a little bit softer because it's been processed more heavily than straight flashaboo and in my opinion it's I don't know if you've ever fished a fly and the more you fished it the more it got beat up the better it fished. That's what happens with Polar Flash. It might break out, it might get stuck in some teeth every once in a while, but the more you fish it, the fishier it gets. It is unbelievable when that stuff gets teased out, how successful and realistic it looks in the water. It's pretty cool. So now we're going to do our top wing, which is our flash tail. Very simple blend here. I'm going to come in with Magnum Flash. I'm going to go heavy on the gold, four strands of gold, light on the silver, two to three strands of silver, very light on some pearly opal, maybe only two strands of opal, and then I'm going to go heavy on some bronze. And these are all just matte. And when I say heavy, I'm talking like four or five strands. So we did like four, five, two and two, I don't know, it's maybe like 15 strands. Now that flash, 20 inches long, very long. I like to drape it in half, cut it, kind of roll it in my fingers, and then just tease out the tips. And that's how I like to do the flash tail. And with all of that solid matted flash like that, the blend and the realism, especially with that bronze and the gold, is sick. It is so cool in the water. Fold that back. So that, I should have articulated that. So we're talking about two techniques in this video. One is doing it in the round, which we've done so far with everything. SF, big fly fiber, pull a flash. Now I stacked it solely on top, shoved my thumb and nail into it to veil it, and now I'm gonna pull it back. And this is what I just call, you know, a simple high tie. High tie, low tie would be on the underside. But I'm just gonna put the flash wing only on top. Just like that, and then we're gonna run forward and rinse and repeat that. So now I'm gonna come back in 
with our core, our, our literal material dam to flare everything out and give it structure. And we're gonna come in with probably not quite twice as much, maybe close to it though, because we want it to be bigger. We wanna build bulk and it's really easy to just build bulk with a little bit more material. And the nice little crinkle to this will simply build more bulk. Again, I'm gonna cut it into thirds and I just kind of do that in my lap and I'm a pretty good guess at it. Uneven the tips just a little bit so it's not a nice straight edge. Comb that out. Make sure that glue is not super tacky. And then I'm going to fold that in. And it has a little bit of taper to it but not a lot. And I just mean it might be a little longer here and a little shorter but it's not super intentional. Thumbnail on top and just pinch it. And those pinches are really what help move the material around to make it even. And then I make a flat base right there with my thread to tie all this down on top of, but backwards. And that just makes it tied in twice, super durable. It helps the, the front fibers and back fibers to fight each other and build a nice amount of bulk right there. Step down onto your shank here and then tag that with some glue. Now one of the biggest benefits to doing uh, these really tight to the core SF wings is I could tie the whole fly kind of out of SF blended with flash. Uh, but what's really nice is the big fly fiber I've mentioned without the crinkle has less uh, water resistance and wind resistance. Uh, but tying in cores keeps a lot of material friction tight and close to the hook shank and it helps balance out the hook a little bit better in the water tying a bunch of long wings, those wings tend to just lift up and the hook tends to drop down. Now I want some taper between my rear fibers and this fiber. So I'm just going to measure that off, cut that flush, re-taper some of that, and I can tell this is a denser than I'd like. So as I do that, I'm going to ditch about 20 fibers there. And even out those tips. Let's see how we're looking. Nice. So you can see this lands just short. And then if you fold that, this is just a little bit longer. This is all just a little bit shorter. It's all just about taper. Come in, catch, catch, catch. Thumbnail right on top. And then just pinch and manipulate, pinch and manipulate. When I grab it, sometimes I even put a little twist into it. And then as I wrap that back, I'll just check and make sure that, yep, it's nearly perfect on the bottom. Nearly perfect, pretty close enough. And wrap back to that thread, and I have that little thread bump right there. And it'll just force all this up, and then it'll support it with the SF. And because we're bullet tying, it's okay to let go, if you have to, to manipulate this and really control all that. Look at that. That's a sweet amount of bulk on a fly using only straight fibers really to build that silhouette up. Unbelievably durable tying technique with just 360 degree doubled over stack and pack with an orange core and dark gold and brown sucker colors. I'm gonna come in. I burned through my last copper polar flash in that bulkhead video. I'm gonna get a good amount here maybe 15 strands again. And this time I'm gonna cut it just shorter and we're gonna tie it in with a different taper so that it's all kind of up here in this head section. So again, maybe 60, 40. And this can be a little bit sloppier. Just two turns, 360 degrees, really walk it around tight and then just flare that back. That doesn't have to be super clean. It's just about veiling all that big fly fiber with some contrast. And then we're gonna comb that out real quick. Now you'll realize that the shorter fibers, the shorter you tie them in, the easier they are to comb out, right? It's just like when you uh, hand blend that big fly fiber and comb it out. If you start way up here and you got a long fiber, you'll just pull it all into a knot and it gets trapped. When you start, you always start at the tail and the middle and the head and because it's so short, it picks out really clean when it's tied in 50-50 like that. Really doesn't give you much trouble. 
don't drop your super glue. It's terrifying. All right, now we're coming in to the true high tie, low tie section of this video, <laughs> which is our uh, SF wings. So we're gonna come with SF blend. This is Steve for our flash blend. And my two, this is probably my favorite color ever. It's called bronze back. Nice dark brown model with black and light tan, a little bit of angel hair flash, and then white. Because suckers have a super white belly, no matter kind of what they look like. You don't need a lot. Uh, and what we're gonna do is kind of a long thick wing on top and a sparse thin wing, thin wing on the bottom. I'm gonna use it at full length. I'm gonna taper the tips to free it up a little bit. Comb it out. Whatever side is kind of more tapered to it, I'm gonna use for my tail section. And you can see that drapes basically 70% of that fly. And the way that's tied in, these tips bleed into these tips which is gonna then bleed into the head. So for your high tie, low tie, basically a little counterclockwise uh, twist for a tight catch. Catch it right on top. My fingers can go underneath the hook so that when I apply pressure, it doesn't roll. And all I'm gonna do is kind of make a little thread dam right here. I might shove my nail into it to veil it out a little bit, and then I'm just gonna make a thread base. Drape that back, and I'm gonna bullet tie that right on top of that big old bump. So this whole fly, literally everything and every single step is just all about being tied in twice. It really makes for a super durable bug. Flip that to the underside. Coming in with white SF. I'm probably going to use half as much fiber, so it's going to be lighter. And then I'm going to fold that in half and make the wing twice as short, so it has a lot less leverage on the orientation of that hook point because these curly wavy fibers have a lot of friction in the water. And if you make the bottom wing long and thick, it's gonna have a tendency to flip that hook over, which you don't want. Little veil into it. I'm just stacking that right on the underside. Make a nice little thread base, fold it back, bullet tie that. Make sure everything is veiled appropriately. And then I'll hold that and step down. So to finish off the fly, we're gonna come in with, I got strung fuzzy fiber in brown for the top, cream for the bottom. We're gonna use the same high tie, low tie technique for the, that we did with the SF. And I'm gonna blend those the top wing is going to be a dark brown and a medium brown blended with the big fly fiber or the strong fuzzy fiber and then I'm going to do fluorescent yellow with the, the cream. So it's just going to be a nice kind of highlighted throat patch there. We don't need to go super heavy. I like to cut it off the hank and then rip it down. And then for the both stacks, we're basically going to do cut that in half. Cut that in half, and you're gonna have you know, basically your back stack and your front stack to build your head taper like that. Now I'm gonna blend them at the same time and then rip it in half 50-50. Now I blend this the same that I did the big fly fiber. I call it rip stacking. So I just have it pinched in my hand and I just tease it out, put it back, tease it out, pull it back. And if you can do it with the big fly fiber, you can do it with this. I could blend the SF wings with the polar flash and add different colors and blend different colors of SF together to get the right tone. It's just a good little thing to practice. But once you blend that roughly, again, you take your comb, rip all that stuff through so your fibers are aligned. And then the way I do that, I always kind of have one end with a little bit more taper. And that's the end veils the back. So again, just a loose catch. If you need to, spin counterclockwise so that it'll trap against your finger. Fingers go underneath, like when you're stacking deer hair, to stop it from rotating to the underside. Now I'm going to come in with that cream. I'm going to pack that right, same proportions as I did on top, so it's symmetrical. I'm going to 
and again a nice clean catch on that and again just kind of pinch the side so it can't roll around on you bring it up to the side here and as I pull this back we're not going to kind of bullet tie this one what we're going to do is you're just going to bring your thread through and you can see I have it it went right through the two color combos just right through the two color combos drape that back and we're just going to get our thread up here and instead of doing a big old thread dam and all this stuff I just kind of pinch that off to the side hold that hair back come in with a little CA plus and that CA plus glue sets very quickly into the strong fuzzy fiber and it's going to hold all that material back perfectly seated nice and tight like that and you don't have to come in and work worry about putting a boatload of materials on there and then a big thread dam to control everything and trying to hollow tie you know basically a head material like that can be a pain in the butt and this stops you from crowding that hook eye just get your thread in front put down a little base and then super glue because that super glue sets up on the synthetics super well same technique here and you can see I just manipulate it so that I can get it all in my hand a little counterclockwise my thread is super loose because I spun it I don't have to control it it doesn't have to be under tension to be controlled then I can just kind of seat that nice high and tight right there at the hook eye flip it under and do the same thing And again, don't worry about controlling necessarily all that material. Just put down a base so that you can come in and cleanly catch your, your whip finish and your half hitch. My half hitch fell off and now I got too much thread out. How many fingers do you have? <laughs> Almost got away from me, but we, we caught it. Now you can come in and if you have kind of a little separation here in your strung fuzzy fiber and just pinch those things together so you get a really clean seam and then for the final one I'll brush this out before I super glue it so I know all those fibers are slicked back in the right direction and then I can just come in a little CA plus right on the threads and you just put it's not like you're dumping glue into that head you're not it's just uh, like if you needed you know 10% to cure up that thread just put on 20% you don't need a lot because all you're doing is setting just the angle right here at the base you do not need a lot of glue to actually set that and create a super clean head with it and you can just see I just take my junk bobbin to run that glue up into that head and secure everything Then you just come in with your scissors. The sculpting and the shaping is up to you guys. I'm going to keep it mostly high and tight, but that you'll see that strung fuzz will build a nice three dimensional, ultra realistic shaped head. And something I always do with it is I tough it away from the fly so that I get a nice clean cut and it doesn't just lay down from my scissors. A lot of time, if you put your scissors on something, it'll lay down and you won't be able to cleanly shape something. So I always pull it away from the head and then cut it off. So what's really cool, as you can see, I have my white belly and it goes into a, a cream throat patch and that cream is super fluorescent so it's a really nice hot spot right there at the hook eye front of the hook come eat me right there make sure more than anything that this head is symmetrical in width so that you're going to get a nice tracking fly so now to finish her off right 
I love sticker eyes. I think sticker eyes are the bomb because they're not rigid. They don't have a hard outer layer. And if you look at a 3D eye, uh, it's very easy for a fish's tooth to catch a 3D eye. 3D eye. And anything that has that epoxy rigid dome on it, it has leverage over that whole thing. Once it catches the edge, it just pulls the whole eye off. Sticker eyes can just bend and flex and move out of the way. And what's really cool is then you come in with a UV resin over the top, you drape it over the edges that then seep into the materials, and now you've created a 3D eye using resin, and that resin is now not just on the outside of the eye, but it's inside the materials. So, kind of my favorite way to make a bulletproof head <coughs> is to glue a 2D eye onto the material, let it set up, and then put a UV dome making that 2D eye three dimensions and having that dome then soaked into the materials on the outside of the eye and it makes for the best finish. The other thing about 2D eyes is if you choose not to do the epoxy coating or the UV resin coating, they're very light, right? Because they don't have the dome. So this is liquid fusion. Um, this has been kind of the best eye glue I have found recently. And I like to put a pretty big dab, about the size of the pupil, right on top of the fibers. Put it symmetrical, same amount, both sides. And then you're just going to take that eye which is a 5 16th uh, flashaboo eye. That's just a sticker eye, 2D. Get that off my finger and shove it right on top of all that glue. Rinse and repeat on the other side there. You can always use your bodkin if you don't want to get glue all over your fingers. That'd probably be recommended. And all I'm going to do, because that was a pretty good amount of glue, because this is a pretty large eye at 5 16 of an inch, just smash that into the head and then that needs a pretty decent amount of time to cure it's not going to set up real quick which is good because you got a lot of time to work with it make sure you like it and you'll just you can tell when you touch that you know 10 for 10 minutes from now it's going to kind of be a little squishy and 20 minutes from now it'll be a little squishy and when you come back two hours from now, it'll be nice and firm and solid and good to go. So all you gotta do is kind of hold those in place. You have an eye that's kind of set back a little bit from the head, which is more realistic. It's not right at the hook eye. We've created a nice three-dimensional head shape. It's not super pinched or collapsed, yet it's still very much so high and tight and can dig left and right with a lot of balance because we have a lot of material friction on the core of the hook with the way we structured our material dams, yet we have very limp, straight, low friction tail fibers with a flash tail dressing. So that's the Imposter, basically 2021 edition, updated, beefier hook, brushless design, better three-dimensional structured head. Only two techniques. You only need two techniques to tie the whole fly besides the blending. So I'll give you three techniques, right? <laughs> you gotta distribute materials 360 degrees, you got a high tie, low tie, and you gotta be able to hand blend. If you just learn the techniques, this whole thing becomes accessible to you. And those same techniques allow you to tie the all spark, the glide fly, the brushless mega jerk, right? So it's like you get a lot of patterns out of very simple techniques, and really the technique. You could tie a Popovix inner flash fly. It's honestly, it's the same as just moving and distributing bucktail, just moving it around and high tie, low tie, and a side stack on a 3D fly. Really simple techniques that have a ton of applications for a ton of patterns, and it pays to, to simply learn them and be able to manipulate those materials. <clears throat> the last thing I'll add for those who are curious um, about brushes. So the original Imposter used to brush. The original AllSpark brush, Critical Getter, Mega Jerk, they were all brush designs. And <clears throat> the reason why that is, is because I needed to do something different and unique. And dubbing brushes were something that people were not designing. And basically, when I started my Predator fly tying in my business, Bramer's Custom Flies, nobody was really designing brushes uh, at a custom level. People were just, you know, there was the EP brushes, which were three inches, and basically that was the biggest brush on the market. Nobody had designed a true Predator brush. 
and I saw a Larry Dahlberg video, and he goes over kind of material selections and bottle brush technology and what he would do to make a really big fly that would still be castable. And I took that material set, and I came up with the proportions that I wanted. And this is what you get. You get an SF core with a big fly fiber wing with flash. Now I can stack all that. I just showed you how to stack all that. And the, it's not really an advantage to do the brush or an advantage to do it this way. There's, there's not better or worse. Um, the kind of cool thing about a brush is I can make it very complex, very easily. It doesn't take any time. The hand blending thing, you just put it on the table in different layers, right? So you can make something complex easily. Uh, durability, this is probably more bulletproof because everything's tied in twice with that really intense kind of bullet tie with super glue. But dubbing brushes, especially with large nine thousandths of an inch wire, proper wax, they're pretty darn bulletproof too. Um, and so really you have to understand the reason why I did it was because nobody else was doing it. It was my way in. It was my foot in the door type thing. Of this is how I can do something cool and unique that nobody's done is design dubbing brushes around these predator flies and it allows me to tie a flash tail that's different than everybody else's flash tail or an articulated flash tail, the mega jerk, that's different than everybody else's kind of just flash tail synthetic. Now, <clears throat> moving forward, it's a lot of work to make a brush when I could just sit down and get something that is functionally the same. So I don't always do it anymore. A lot of times I just stack and pack like this and tie off the cuff and that way I don't have to sit down and make a brush. It's not as commercially efficient if you're going to tie a dozen of these. I'd want to do dubbing brushes probably because it's very simple. Five turns, flash. Five turns, SF, head, done. Like if, you know, the brushes make it simple. But that's why I used to do brushes so heavily. Understand that. It's not necessarily right or wrong, pros or cons, better or worse. It was just because it was an untouched venue. <laughs> I wanted to touch it. <laughs> and so now that I don't uh, really need to do that and I can simplify things and just teach you how to do this in a more accessible fashion to more people, a lot of times I choose that option. So just something to know if you wanted to kind of understand why you're not seeing a dubbing brush right now. But thank you everybody for watching. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to put this in the swim tank because I'm waiting for those eyes to dry and that glue to dry. That's why you're not going to see that. Um, but the style speaks for itself. I've caught, I've caught more fish on a synthetic flash tail with a structured head like this than probably any other fly in the predator category, like single hook, eight inch fly than I've ever fished in my life. So this is kind of my confident go-to pattern. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll catch you guys later. Check out all of this stuff in the web shop, which nobody stayed this long. But for those who did, check it out if you want to tie some up. Many thanks. See you guys. Well, I wasn't going to do this, <laughs> but I came down here and after the glue was set up, put a UV dome on it and figured what the heck. So got it in the tank, hanging out. So you can see that in the water silhouette. So you can see it ride through. So you can see it every time it hits that water. Orients hook down. That would have been a nice kick and glide right there. I love that flash tail. All that complex, solid flash boo in the back. Another thing that mono thread is good for is just rip off three feet of it, run your hand through it to take the memory out. You got yourself leader material for your swim tank. There you go. That's the imposter. 2021.